Jai Guru. Question. How to do puja or worship to the masters? Answer. There is no set way of doing puja to the masters. Be guided by your heart's devotion to the masters and let it happen spontaneously. If you have an altar at home with the images of the masters, surround them with flowers. Light a candle. Prostrate on the floor facing the masters with an attitude of surrender. If you cannot manage a full prostration, then simply bow to the masters with a heart full of love. Light some incense. Circle the incense clockwise in front of the masters, concentrating on one master at a time. Let any words arise spontaneously within you. Offer yourself to the masters and ask for their guidance. Also, thank them for all that they have given to you. Make it a regular practice to bow to each master because he is the impersonal, unmanifest absolute in manifest form. Each time we bow, we remove a little more ego, thus growing in humility. And through our reverence and devotion to the Master, we draw closer to our inner Master. Question. As the practice progresses, does this awareness cause a reset in the flow of the illusion. It's as if by letting go of me, there are earthquakes in the illusion, both at work and at home with the family. At the moment, I feel like letting the hurt arise and trying to just let go. But how can I do that? Because if I say there is no me, then how can I feel someone has hurt me? We are, after all, knowingly or not, the same oneness. Answer. External things can change as you undergo the practice. There can be positive or negative energies at play. All illusion anyway. You can still feel the hurt because you have not yet dissolved. You can say there is no you, but that is just an intellectual statement. You are still very much there. So I suggest that you just let the feelings arise of hurt and anger and whatever else. As Maharaj says, these feelings, when expressed, are just noises like barking dogs. Question. As you know, my outer life is depressing. And now the depressive feelings seem to have intensified and causing me even more distress. What does it mean? I guess I need to persist come what may and to whatever time it takes, driven by Maharaji's assurances. Answer. The Nam Mantra clears out everything, consciously and unconsciously, while you are awake or dreaming. What does it mean? It means the Nam Mantra practice is doing its job. Ignore the thoughts and let the process unfold spontaneously. All thought is unreal. The thinker is unreal.
keep up the practice with faith and determination. You are doing great. Be courageous. All is well where it counts. Don't let the thoughts or feelings touch you. You are neither. Question. One query and to keep me motivated on the path as one progresses on the path of Nam Mantra meditation and Japa. Will there be any changes along the way? Of course, the final impact is spontaneous conviction. Answer. Yes, indeed. And you have already demonstrated some of these in yourself. Basically, the things that used to bother the mind-body and have a stronghold over you because you accepted and took them for real will not bother you any longer. The more the Nam Mantra is absorbed within you, the less power these illusory attachments will have over you until gradually nothing will be left. And even when these do surface now, they will touch you less, not really affect you because the knowledge is being absorbed and the truth of I am Brahman is replacing the falsehood of I am so-and-so with all its associations. Question. As far as my problems go, I am finding that surrendering what, whatever transpires to Brahman is best. Everything is getting impinged on the one consciousness or Brahman. While the Nam Mantra will remove the impurities that cloud my true nature as Brahman, surrender, stemming out of a sense of helplessness, will keep me sane moment by moment. Answer. Yes, as I said, find what works for you. Surrender out of a sense of helplessness is powerful. You can also surrender out of pure devotion for the love of Sadguru, be that in the form of Ramana or Ramakant. You have had a lifelong devotion to Ramana, so that should help the surrendering too. Not my will, but thy will be done. Question. What is the process we have to undergo? It seems like a solitary one tinged with anxiety. Answer. The book Selfless Self explains the three stages of the process, namely self-inquiry, self-knowledge and self-realisation. Listening to or singing the bhajans will help you absorb the knowledge so that it does not remain dry and intellectual. There should not be any anxiety. Who is anxious and why? You're not left alone on the journey either. Know that the masters are blessing you and showering you with grace and helping you to go forward and deeper. There should be eagerness and determination en route. One day, spontaneous conviction will arise and then there will not be any further need for practice. Just devotion, puja to the masters, to thank them for enabling our liberation from the ego. This keeps us humble. And lastly, question. You told me that Ramakant Maharaj chose the title for the new book. My first reaction to the title, Who Am I?, was how could a title the same as Bhagavan's little book be used? 
another concept I quickly realised. But it is really good for me. After reading passages from Who Am I, it makes for a clearer understanding of selfless self. Thanks to you and Maharaj, he has truly carried on with Bhagavan's legacy. Bhagavan's Who Am I customised for the modern age. You are his instrument to make it fructify. The Sampradaya is there and I hope that there are other members doing their silent bit. May many more benefit. Sri Ramakant, incredible. Words cannot describe his greatness. Like Bhagavan, the world will slowly but surely know his immense contribution. Well, I say amen to that. Jai Guru.